What it do, T Squad? It's your girl Keisha, aka Color Me Pink, and I'm here with this week's All T All Shade Bad Boys Texas Season 2, Episode 2 review. I draw videos Monday through Sunday. Everything that I say is for entertainment purposes only and not to be taken seriously or literally, meaning my jokes and Jones. So if that works for you, let's get into this review, okay? Hopefully, you guys had an amazing week. I did. But anywho, so the episode picks up where we left off last week with Big Lou and really B getting into a fisticuff. So Big Lou pushes really in his chest and really get to doing some uppercuts. Boom, bow, bink, bink. Uh, security then breaks him apart and Big Lou popping off at the mouth like he really did something. He was like, puss, oh, and da 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 You supposed to stick up for your friends. You supposed to stick up for your friends. Mind you, he holding his hair up. And I'm like, why is he holding his hair up? Do he got fake locks <laughs> like Rio did last season? Because he did not let that hair go until somebody gave him a hair tie. And it was giving me very much maybe his locks are not real. Maybe he got some extensions. Because it's just like, why are you holding on to these locks for dear life? So, or here go Orlando Thomason. Does anybody have popcorn, kettle corn, chocolate? No. <laughs> Orlando be tickling me. So, Chef D says that he ran up on Anthony after security pulled Jonathan back. You was a lie and a half. A lie and a half. You saw that boy run over and hit him. And then you decided to run up and get yours off. I don't like you, you big and wrong, and I just need for you to go on somewhere because you are a disappointment. You really, really are. So after talking it out, Lou and really squashed their issues or whatever. And it's like hallelujah because I'm getting sick of y'all arguing. So the next day, we see Jonathan, Lou, Chef D, Mo, and Raz all riding in one car heading to the house. <clears throat> Mind you, they're in Houston. Then in the other car, we have Relly, Prince, Orlando, Banga, and Carry On. So Anthony is missing. And so that's the topic of conversation in the first car. So Chef D was like, you know, when I went out with Anthony and he saw that even though I wasn't on the show, MFs was still showing me mad love. And he was like, damn, I'm the one on TV right now. Why ain't nobody coming up to me? Now, this is either his perception or either that's really how it was. We don't know because we weren't there. So we don't know if his feelings are valid or not. We don't know. So um, Jonathan was like, I feel like y'all was being fake around each other. And he was like, but no, I'm not being fake. And so Jonathan was like, well, Anthony is a fake ass bitch at the end of the day. That's all I got to say about it. And he was standing on that. Mind you, Jonathan got on a hat with Rio braids. <laughs> <laughs> sold in I think he started selling them type of hats or something if I'm not mistaken but I'm like Jonathan you are a fool for that one honey so in the other car really was like you know I want them to talk it out talking about Jonathan and Anthony because they were all you know good Judy's Banger was like you know I don't like Chef D I don't like that B and Prince in his confessional was like, I'm not trying to get into it with Jonathan. I ain't worried about no nigga on this show, but Jonathan's strong, no. <laughs> if you get into it, okay, but make a valiant effort to not get into it with this strong-ass nigga. <laughs> At least he was honest, though. At least he was honest. Like, we all know, well, I've seen Prince fight. Prince got some hands or whatever. But at the same time, Jonathan do got haymakers. Like, that is a big ox. <laughs> like, Jonathan looked like he was in the fields from uh, sunrise to sundown, child. He looked like he lift weight for fun. He seemed like he eat, like, three tons of beef every day, drink, like, five gallons of milk. That is a big boy. You can't tell me when he was born he ain't weighed 10 pounds. Like, that's a big Negro. I wouldn't want to fight him neither. Absolutely not. So they get to the house. It's a huge, humongous mansion. Like, this is just not a regular mansion. Like, this is an estate. It is huge. So they get in the house, and Jonathan immediately runs upstairs to go find his room, child. He gets, like, the master bedroom. But really um, decides to have a conversation with the rest of the guys before they go look for their rooms. And he was like, you know, let's just not go in each other's rooms. Let's keep the house clean. And if y'all going to bang 
fight outside. Like, can we at least do that? And they looking like, mm, I don't know about that girl. If it get the cracking, it get the cracking. But I'm with Relly on that. Like, I don't understand why y'all get in these real nice houses and want to fight on the inside. Take that outside. I keep on saying that if I was Zeus, I would put them suckers in a in a like a cabin <laughs> a cabin somewhere out far so they ain't got to worry about noise complaints or anything like that if they want to square up they can go outside and square up in the, outside in the grass in the field ain't nobody gonna be around to say nothing like that's what they need to do because y'all not going to be coming up in these nice airbnbs messing stuff up and then they gotta pay for damages i would take that out y'all check you fight up in this house, I'm taking it out your check, period. That'll get them suckers to go outside and start acting like they got some sense. So, um, after that, Banga and Chef D are in Relly's room. And Banga takes the opportunity to let Chef D know how he felt about him jumping into the fight that Jonathan had with Anthony. And he was like, you know, you could have waited. And I agree. And I'm happy that Banga least stood on his wasn't afraid to tell him how he felt like he said it you know behind his back and he's saying it in his face so I'm like okay I'm starting to like Banga he seems like he's sensible um he know right from wrong he ain't clout chasing he ain't running behind folks trying to you know get his little 15 minutes of fame I like him I just need for him to get some Carmax I need for him to get some Carmax and have it on deck at all times or some chapstick because baby the whole time he was having that conversation with Chef D that man lips look like Pookie from <laughs> New Jack City. It was like, ooh, baby. Ooh, I just wanted to go <laughs> and, and massage my spit into his lips. I was like, you don't feel that? You don't feel that? Uh-uh. No, no, no. Carmax is what, $1.99? Uh-uh, girl. Mm -mm. And his lips was always like that. I'm like, ooh, I know your breath probably stink then. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. No, that, that, mm-mm, nope, 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 nope. So he tells Chef D how he feels, and here goes Chef D. First of all, I caught him in a lie. So Chef D was like, I didn't see Jonathan fighting. And then he goes into, Anthony has bullied me online for a year. And Banger was like, how he bullying your big ass? Exactly, your big overgrown self talking about somebody bullying you. Grow up. So, um, uh, Chef D was like, I have a brand, bro. He tried to destroy my brand, and Banger was like, Well, you could have fought him another time. So then, here's when Chef D lies and was like, As soon as Jonathan was done, I just went in. He was reaching out to people I work with. Well, you, literally two minutes ago, you just said that. You didn't see Jonathan fighting him. But now you turn around and say, as soon as Jonathan was done, I just went in. First of all, you jumped that boy. You waited until Jonathan got his, you know, kicked it off. And then you, you know, ran up. You ran up to get yours off. And it was whack. It was whack. You too dang on big to be trying to jump in somebody else fight to get your rocks off. Like, come on now. Come on. I don't like you. Mm -mm. I want to taste your food, but I don't like you. Okay. And I'm, I'm pretty sure saucy Santana looking like, Oh, I don't want the world knowing this was my old peas. And like chef D chef D chef D was all that came up for like over a year. And it's like, mm. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh -uh. I don't like him. Mm -mm. Nah, he a lame old mm -mm. new. So, then um really was like, I gotta get out of my room. So Banger goes into the room next door and was like, Oh, this is my room. And so Chef D was like, Well, where I'm gonna sleep at? And he looking like, girl, that ain't my issue. And he was like, Well, I'm sleeping in here. He was like, No, you're not. He was like, Yes, I am. So they going back and forth about this room. And Chef D finally like backs up off of it because he literally was trying to act like he was gonna try to punk him up out of that room, like Jonathan um did. Um old boy from last season, but he didn't want them type of problems. He really honestly didn't. I don't like Chef D. He, 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 he doing too much, first of all. He ain't really about that life. He big and can't even fight. Like, it's just like you a waste of space, sir. Just, ugh. So then we see Prince laying up in his room. Let me tell you something. Prince got a body on him. 
He got the exact type of build that I like in a man. Just tall, athletic build, the tattoos. I just hate his hair. His hair is Willy Wonka. It's all over the place. I'm not liking this little S curl he got going on. He needs some waves and call it a day. But Prince Body, chef's kiss. Yes, God. And when he was laying on that bed with his legs cocked open, I just wanted to crawl up in between them and, ooh. <laughs> Woo. So, um, while he in the room, uh, who came in his room? Orlando and Raz B came in his room or whatever. And he took the opportunity to let uh, Orlando know that, you know, in the media, they portray you as being crazy and a loose cannon and this, this, that, and the third. He was like, now, granted, it's the first day, but since I've been around you, like, you've been cool and level-headed. And Orlando was like, thank you. You're like, he really appreciated that people, like, are kind of seeing him for him. Um, and I think that if he had more positive people around him, maybe that would help with his addiction and, you know, getting his life back on track. I feel like maybe he just needed somebody to believe in him and support him. I don't know what happened to him in his childhood with him being a child star. Maybe something happened. I don't know. Maybe his family F them over. Who knows? You know, child stars normally pretty heavy rough. It's not many that make it out unscathed. So I would really want to know like what led him down this path to being on drugs and all that type of stuff. Like I really want to know. Um, so after that, Jonathan is in his room and Big Lou comes in and was just like, you know, I want to thank you, you know, for, you know, supporting me and everything like that. Cause we find out that Jonathan gave him his first styling gig because that's what he wants to do. He's a, a stylist or whatever. And he was saying, uh, Lou was saying like how he could never forsake Jonathan. Cause you know, he was the first person to, you know, put him on and give him an opportunity. But Jonathan was like, you know, don't be a BS stylist like you did me. Pizzano. So I don't know what he did. I don't know if Jonathan gave him an opportunity and then he got the big head. I don't really know. But Jonathan was kind of like hoeing him out, <laughs> like really honestly was. And I like Jonathan a lot, but it is kind of giving a little bit like, okay, I can fight. And so I'm going to like talk to people any type of way. You know what I'm saying? It is kind of giving a little bit of a bullying vibe. So he could see like how far he can take it with certain people. And that's just not cool. You know, we know you can fight or whatever. Half these dudes in this house is way smaller than you outside of Chef D and Anthony. Like sit down somewhere, please sit down. Cause it's just not cute. It's really honestly not. And I didn't, I didn't like the, the, the energy that was coming from Jonathan. I really honestly didn't. So Relly comes in the room and asks, can he and Anthony make up? And Jonathan was like, Ain't nothing to make up. Like, I'm fine. I'm cool. Like, he didn't really want to talk about it. And then he was like, go charge your leg monitor. <laughs> Why are you worried about me? And I totally forgot that this man is um got an ankle bracelet. I keep on forgetting that him and Orlando is under surveillance, child. <laughs> so the guys, some of the guys, who was it? Orlando, Raz. Mo and Prince went outside to the basketball court and was playing basketball. And Orlando goes to pass Raz the ball, and Raz was not paying attention. And he ended up hitting that man in the face. Child, I hollered. I hollered. He was so apologetic. He was like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And Raz was like, It's cool. It's cool. Whatever. Or what? Uh, whatever. I did notice in the opening credits that Raz has an executive producer credit this season as well as Jonathan. So, um, I'm thinking with that clause, he, I'm thinking, I'm really feeling like this season Raz and, uh, what's his name? Orlando had it in their contracts that they will not be fighting because remember we found out, I think it was like two reunions ago on baddies that they have it, um, in their contracts or whether or not they want to fight when they come to the reunion or not. And I think that's probably the same deal that Raz and Orlando inked with Zeus. So um, all the guys are in the kitchen and Banga and Chef D get to talking about this Anthony situation again. And Jonathan was like, you don't understand, though, because that whole sneaky, you don't know. Like she probably did involve you in some stuff and you don't even know. And it's just like, I get what y'all said. He probably does have shady ways or whatever the case may be. But as far as 
Jonathan's reasons for having an issue with Anthony, it's honestly childish and ridiculous. It really honestly is. The only way I can see Jonathan having an issue with Anthony is if Anthony, I mean, if uh, Rio was like talking cash, you know, ish about Jonathan, like I'm going to do this, that, and the third to him or whatever after the show. Then I'll be looking at you like, and you hanging with this app and you supposed to be my friend. Okay, I can get that. But if Rio been silent ever since last season, then just leave it alone at this point. So all the guys is outside. They have the little freestyle session. That was really cute. It was a bonding session. It was it was chill and it was funny. And I want more moments like that on both of the shows. So after that, Anthony comes to the house and talks to Riley and Kirion. And his hand is hurt, apparently, from the altercation from the day before. And he says that he's there to stay. He ain't no hoe. He ain't going to let nobody run him out of nothing. But he does want to have a conversation with Jonathan. So um, we then learn in his confessional that apparently Chef D is Natalie's best friend. And he was saying how he be talking about Natalie all the time. And I'm like, who don't talk about Natalie? <laughs> I don't even think Natalie has actual, actual friends because she's a friend to nobody. Like, I really think that Natalie only ride with her baby. I don't even think she really ride with her husband based off all the stuff we be hearing about how she are out on the road and be messing with other dudes or whatever. So, mm-mm. So, everybody then meet in the game room to have a meeting. And Banga says that, you know, he stood next to Anthony just so he can know that, you know, he got somebody there to support him and that, you know, genuinely cares. Because really in the house, all he got is really to an extent and carry on to an extent but ain't nobody here to fight on his behalf or nothing like that so they get to having a conversation and Anthony tries to explain to Jonathan his feelings about everything and it was so sad to watch that man um because you could tell he was trying to like choose his words carefully to not like rile Jonathan up because he didn't want to fight that man again. He honestly didn't. And I think that his feelings were a little bit low key hurt about how Jonathan handled the situation. But it was like watching a little kid that know he about to get a whooping if he say the wrong thing. Like, oh, my God, it was so heart-wrenching. So Jonathan was like, you shouldn't even cost a friendship over $300, over a section, over somebody that set you up. Anthony was like, he ain't set me up. He might have set you up, but my loyalty to you, it wasn't to him. That's why I took his money. And so Anthony was like, and Chef D, I don't give two Fs about you. You a big-ass pussy. You never was my real friend. And Chef D was like, now I'm not your real friend. And Relly was like, well, we all used to live together at one point. And I'm like, what? Because remember Chef D was saying he had never even met Anthony before. And come to find out, y'all lived with each other. So this goes further than what we just knowing about. I'm wondering, did they have something going on? Like, is money involved? Like, do you owe him some money? Because Chef D out here making it seem like he that dude. And you sitting up here being roommates with two other guys. Like, do you have it like that or do you not? So Anthony was like, you did live with me. I ain't even bring it up, but you acting real funny. And he didn't bring it up. Really was the one that brought it up. So, you know, he could have put him out there and really put him on blast. And he did not. And Chef D's denying it. He was like, uh, I ain't never lived with nobody. And I'm looking at him like. So you just a lying ass nigga. <laughs> you ain't even just a pussy ass. You a lying ass. I don't like him. I don't like him at all. He is so whack. So Anthony was like, well, why you jump in on somebody else's fight? Why you ain't get you won on your own and chef d was like i mean we can get one what's up so he come walking around the table and anthony was like you know when my hand is good i'm gonna get you and d was like I, I ain't waiting on your hand to heal it's whatever so anthony was like back the f up back the f up and then chef d you know swings on him or whatever and i'm like who even fight like this outside of girls first of all that hold they dukes up like this not i but whatever and he get to swing in and Anthony get to, you know, windmilling or whatever. But I'm just looking at Chef D like, you're a waste of space because you can't even fight. You can't even fight. God gave you all that height and weight for nothing. <laughs> like, you are pathetic. Pathetic. 
pathetic. I don't like you. And I bet you your food ain't even all that good. Like, mm mm, mm mm, mm mm. Like, who are you? You lying about where you live. You lied about not even knowing this man and you did. You lying about jumping him when we know you did. Like, everything has been lies with Chef D so far. I ain't, mm mm, I don't like him, Bernie. Don't like him at all. But overall, I'm going to give tonight's episode. A B plus. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to next week episode, child. Oh, Lord. Y'all let me know what y'all thought, however, about tonight's episode of Bad Boys Texas. Be on the lookout Tuesday for my Met Gala review. Cannot wait for it tomorrow to jump off. And make sure tomorrow you guys tune in to my Summer, ha- summer House Martha's Vineyard cast breakdown. The new um, show premieres this upcoming Sunday, May 7th on Bravo, right after The Real Housewives of Atlanta. I will be reviewing that show as well. So Sundays are going to be lit with Bad Boys Texas, Real Housewives of Atlanta, and Summer House Martha's Vineyard reviews. Okay, let's get it cracking. I love you guys. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell button. I love you, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.